Hi, my name is Leticia Sembera, and uh, welcome to the Scripture Spoken. We are continuing our series through the Book of Revelation, and today we are on episode thirteen, chapter thirteen, and um, we are going to be talking about some topics that I think everybody thinks about when they uh, read the Book of Revelation or when they think of Revelation. We're going to be talking about the Antichrist and the Mark of the Beast and um, the false prophet. So lots of exciting things to talk about today. Uh, but first, before we get started, let's pray. Lord Jesus, <sighs> thank you so much for being my fortress and my refuge and my teacher and for your love and your kindness and your mercy and your grace that is new every single day. Lord, I pray that you be with us today as I teach this lesson, that you would have me to say only the things that you want me to speak and nothing extra. Lord, that the Holy Spirit speaks through me, give me the confidence and the knowledge to speak on this subject matter and to rightly part your word. Lord, help us be Bereans, studying the word and examining it and bring things to life. Lord, illuminate these words so that they make sense, so that we can understand and give us one, even if it's just one new thing uh, to dig into today, something fresh and new to learn. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that I don't take lightly. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, <clears throat> I would be lying to you if I didn't say that I'm just a little bit nervous about today. Uh, probably if there was a chapter I, I wouldn't necessarily want to teach on, it would be this one because I'd want to see what other people had to say about it and not what I had to say. Uh, so I feel um, just um, a little bit intimidated and um, I have this nervous tick that I'll admit to you now, just in case I do it. When I get nervous and I'm about to speak, I um, I do this. <clears throat> uh, and I have to clear my throat. I don't know why I do that, but I do. And I've been doing it right before I started recording. And so just in case I do it throughout, um, <laughs> you'll know why. I'm a little bit nervous because um, I don't want to say the wrong thing. So again... Um, everything that I say, you make sure that you go back and you measure it with the Word of God. And um, that that what Angie said in that very first video when we first started this study, again, helps me every time because I am not an expert. <clears throat> I am studying just like you are studying. And um, so we are like two people sitting in a coffee shop um, seeing what we saw. That's how I see this. And when I think about it like that, it removes some of the pressure and some of the stress. So if you found exciting things in this chapter that I missed or that I may not get to talk about because, again, we can't cover every single thing, then make sure you post it in the comments or or uh, let us know, you know, because this is what this is to me. It's a dialogue. So when I think about it like this, then I can <coughs> calm down. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to read... Um, Chapter 13 of Revelation. Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, on his, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his heads a blasphemous name. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard, his feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth was like the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power, his throne and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world marveled and followed the beast. So they worshiped the dragon who gave authority to the beast. And they worshiped the beast saying, who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And he was given a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And he was given authority to continue for 42 months. Then he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. <clears throat> it was granted to him 
to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. All who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. <clears throat> then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon, and he exercises all the authority of the first <coughs> beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. He performs great signs so that he even makes fire come from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceives those who dwell on earth by those signs, which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of man. His number is 666. <clears throat> okay. So in this chapter, we see um, just in, a, in terms of a general highlight of the overall chapter, um, things that we've heard about and probably all are familiar about when we think about the book of Revelations. We talk about it's called the beast. There's two beasts, one from the sea and one from the land. And then we talk about the mark and the number 666. So I'm pretty sure anybody you ask, whether they go to church or don't go to church, um, whether they're born again or not, knows and has heard about the Antichrist and the mark, the 666. This is something that most people know about. Uh, and you see it in, in culture even even today so most people are familiar with it and it comes from this chapter um so what i would like to do is tackle this in um three sections the first is to talk about the beast from the sea then we're going to talk about the beast from the earth and then lastly we're going to talk about the mark so those are the three sections in which we're going to talk about it and there's no way that i'm going to be able to give you everything about everything and 100% understand it. I'm gonna give you what I've seen, what I've learned, and uh, what stood out to me. But <clears throat> if there's something that um, you know that I did not cover or that you found and you were reading that you're excited to share, I'm excited to know what you want, what you want to share. So make sure to comment and let me know, because uh, it's exciting to talk about this. Um, uh, to talk about it together with people because sometimes something will, will you will get revelation on one thing and I'll get revelation on another and, and you know we're better together so it's cool all right anyway the beast of the sea so this is definitely referring to the antichrist it says that it has seven heads and ten horns and on each horn ten crowns now honestly it sounds hideous I was <laughs> In order for me to understand it, I was kind of like drawing it out on another little tablet. And you should see my hideous drawing that I have here. <clears throat> because I had, I don't know that I'd necessarily paid attention before, that it has seven heads, but 10 horns. And the crowns are not on the heads, which is where you would normally put a crown, right? You'd put it on a head, but it's not on the head, it's on the horn. Um, so you have more horns than you do heads. Um, so I, it's hard to even picture it. And then this beast has, it's like a leopard and it has the feet of a bear 
and it has the mouth of a lion. So just in a physical description, this beast is, uh, looks intimidating, uh, almost like a, a monstrosity even. Um, it's hard to understand or, or to think about, about what this is. But because we have Daniel, um, we know that some of these references to the leopard and the bear and the lion come directly, were also mentioned in Daniel. And it was explained in Daniel what those were, and they referred to countries. So we, um, we know that the seven heads are, hold on, I have like, I have so many notes everywhere. Um, <coughs> that the seven heads are, let me see what I have it here. The set, the seven, and the, what, what confused me, honestly, I'm sorry, let me get my thoughts together. <sighs> I'm nervous. Okay, let me get it together. <laughs> let me just go to Daniel 7. Why didn't I do that? So, um, it's seven nations. And it's, it, it was confusing to me, and I was thinking, well, why is there seven heads, um, but 10 horns. And the thing is that the Antichrist, even in Daniel, it says that this little horn will um, root out three of them. So I believe that this is what this reference is. So these are the nations that are gonna make up this final uh, world power. And there will be 10, but three will be taken out by this little horn is what Daniel calls them. And, um, <coughs> They will, um, see it says here, the 10 horns are the, this is Daniel, I'm sorry, 724. The 10 horns are 10 kings who shall arise from this kingdom and another shall arise after them. He shall be different from the first ones and shall subdue three kings. He shall speak pompous words against the Most High. Secure shall persecute the saints of the Most High and shall intend to change the times and laws. So the main thing here is that the ten horns are ten kings, and they're going to arise from this kingdom, and the three of them are going to be subdued by the Antichrist. So that's what the horns and all of that re represents. Now the leopard, um, the these descriptions of the leopard and the bear and the lion are the exact same descriptions that are given also in the book of Daniel. That are given also in the book of Daniel in Daniel 7, where he has um, the dream. Let me see if I can find it. This is... I love that my other sisters go right to the Bible when they're teaching <laughs> um, and turn to it. It's very distracting to me um, to do it on the fly like this. So I always I type it out and have it ready. Um, but I didn't do that this time. I decided I would turn to the page. So uh, here we go. <clears throat> I'm in Daniel 7. And... I'm going to just read his vision that he had on uh, starting in chapter in verse two. I saw in my vision by night and behold, the four winds of the heaven were stirring up the great sea and the four great beasts came up from the sea, each different from the other. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I watched till its wings were plucked off and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand on two feet like a man and a man's heart was given to it. Suddenly another beast, a second like a bear, it was raised up on one side and had three ribs in its mouth <clears throat> between its teeth, and they said to it, Arise, devour much flesh. After this I looked, and there was another like a leopard, which had on its back four wings of a bird. The beast also had four heads, and dominion was given to it. And after that, I saw a night visions, and behold, a fourth beast 
dreadful and terrible, exceedingly strong. It had huge iron teeth. It was devouring, breaking in pieces, and trampling the residue with its feet. It was different from all the other beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. As I was considering the horns, there was another horn, a little one, coming up among them, before whom three of the first horns were plucked out by the roots, and there in this horn were eyes like eyes of a man and a mouth speaking pompous words. So here is the same, this vision that Daniel had, and it's the same characteristics, the leopard, the bear, and the lion. And these different characteristics stand for um, the lion is Babylon, Medo-Persia is the bear, Greece is the leopard, so, <clears throat> and Rome uh, signifies the ten, uh, the ten, uh, horned beast so all of these things and I'm, i guess i just i want to show that the beast that he's that he is seeing that john is seeing is very similar to what daniel saw um it has pieces of the same animals that daniel saw in his vision in daniel 7 and they're indicating world uh world powers and nations so it's uh, Greece, uh, Medo-Persia, uh, and Babylon. So when we talk about uh, what this beast is, this is the little horn. This is um, this is the Antichrist. This beast out of the sea, and the fact that he's coming out of the sea represents um, that he's coming from people. The sea usually represents people. Now, I will tell you that as I was reading and looking through different commentaries, I did come up something interesting that I hadn't heard before, but I, but I, and it makes sense to me, <clears throat> but I also am not sure about it. So I'm going to say it, um, but actually maybe I shouldn't say it. Um, I will, I will say it. Um, what they said is that the, if you think about the earth, the earth is divided into sea and earth, right? If you think about like the planet earth, it's sea and it's, it's earth uh, and land. And um, that that is symbolic of the Jewish nation and Gentiles. So that there's two, the Jewish and, and Gentiles. And the Jews always have the land. And so the Gentiles are the sea. And that's symbolic in in the Bible that the sea is Gentile. So what they what they were saying is that this this beast is going to come out of the sea. So it's going to come out of a, a Gentile land. Now it doesn't mean because there's other places where I've seen that the Antichrist has to be Jewish or will be of Jewish descent. Um, maybe I don't, I don't know. I couldn't find anything to prove that. That's not saying it doesn't exist. I'm saying I didn't find it. I didn't see it uh, myself, but doesn't mean it's not in here. Um, but it could be that it maybe it is a Jewish descent, um, but somebody who's Jew who has a Jewish descent may be living in a Gentile land. Um, I don't know, but the, the fact that this beast is out of the sea, it's out of the sea of people, and it indicates uh, Gentile. Uh, coming out of a Gentile uh, land, meaning not uh, Jew, not uh, Israel, that, if that makes sense. So <clears throat> the personality, now I want to talk about the personality of the Antichrist. This, the personality that they have is a charismatic speaker. Now, why do I say that? Is because if you look at Revelation uh, 13 5 it says and he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and he was given authority to continue for 42 months so <clears throat> that's three and a half years um so he was given this mouth to speak great things see what it says and when you look at daniel um 7 11 it says And I watched then because of the sound of the pompous words which the horn was speaking. So this, this um, Antichrist is a very charismatic speaker. In another section it says, Daniel 
some kind of where's 20 and the 10 horns that were on its head and the other horn which came up before which had three namely the horn which had eyes and a mouth which spoke pompous words whose appearance was greater than his fellows so you see he was a very charismatic speaker speaking pompous words um the other thing is that the antichrist another part of the antichrist personality is that it's very cunning so remember i said that there was 10 horns and three were were rooted out so he plucks them away from the root showing how cunning he is he says <clears throat> here it is in daniel 7 8 i was considering the horns and there was another horn a little one coming up among them before whom three of the first horns were plucked out by the roots and there in in this horn were eyes like eyes of the man and a mouth speaking pompous words so here it is again about the pompous words but also the fact that hey he was coming up among them so maybe he comes into the scene inconspicuously kind of like a nobody maybe initially and then before you know it cunningly manipulates his way and plucks out three of them so he's cunning he's also very cruel um daniel 7 uh 23 to 25 says um the fourth beast shall the fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom on earth which shall be different from all the other kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth trample it and break it into pieces the horns are ten kings who shall arise from this kingdom, and another shall arise after them, and he shall be different from the first ones, and he shall subdue three kings. He shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High, and shall intend to change times and law. Then the saints shall be given into his hand for a time and times and half a time. So again, here it is how cruel he is that he intends to persecute. He intends to change the times and the law. He's um, <clears throat> devouring the whole earth, trampling it, breaking it into pieces. He's going to be a cruel person. But again, going to be initially very charismatic, um, very kind of uh, cunning as he steps into the scene. He is going to be Another characteristic is he's going to be spiritually blasphemous. Uh, again, he's going to speak pompous words against the Most High, Daniel 7, 25. 2 Thessalonians 2, 4 says, oh no, I didn't mark 2 Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians two four. <clears throat> Who opposes? Okay, let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will come unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed. This is the Antichrist, the son of perdition who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshiped so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So he's blaspheming the real God uh, by this claiming to be um, God himself. So that's another uh, characteristic of him. So he's charismatic, a very good orator. Um, he's cunning, uh, sneaky. He's cruel, uh, trampling the earth. He's spiritually blasphemous. Um, but the thing too, uh, he's he's intimidating in presence. I think about um, the bab, the the a lion and a bear and a leopard and a and, and this beast, this ten horned beast. I mean, that is an intimidating uh, presence. Um, the other thing that I thought was very interesting, and I, you know, it's as, as the times have changed and as I've gotten older, you know, I grew up going to church and listening to two messages on the end of the world and, and it's coming soon. And, and I remember all these messages saying there will come a time when, all, you know, all this would happen. And um, at the time, some of the things didn't make any sense to me. And if you would have told me at that time what I'm about to say, I, it would have been shocking to believe because it wasn't quite so pre prevalent um, at that time. But um, <clears throat> Daniel 11.37 says, He shall regard neither the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall exalt himself above them all. 
Because it says here, he shall regard neither the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God. I think specifically the part about um, not desiring women or not, uh, uh, won't regard the desire of women. Uh, what man would be like that? Um, I would say a homosexual man. So because of the rise of the LGBT community and that whole movement, um, I am guessing that uh, that might be something else about the Antichrist that I wouldn't have thought before, but now because of the rise of that movement and how advanced it is today, that the Antichrist may be somebody who is part of that community, maybe either homosexual, maybe trans, um, I don't know, but he's not going to regard the desire of women. And if you think about a normal uh, man, uh, that wouldn't be normal. Right, it wouldn't be normal. So I think that that's another clue, again, another clue into uh, who the Antichrist will be. So there's several clues here. Again, we don't know, we don't know who it is, uh, but we know that uh, all of these things are, um, are true about the Antichrist. Uh, uh, I also wanted to just kind of give you like this this, I found this reference list of aliases that the Antichrist is called. He's a fierce king, and that's from Daniel 8.23. He is a master of intrigue, Daniel 8.23. He is the prince who is to come, Daniel 9.26. He's a despicable man, Daniel 11.21. He is a worthless shepherd, Zechariah 11.16 to 17. He is the one who brings destruction, 2 Thessalonians 2, 3. He is the lawless one. 2 Thessalonians 2, 8. He is the beast. Revelation 13, 1. So I thought that was a nice summary of all the things that the, um, that the uh, Antichrist um, is. Um, now that we know more about the Antichrist, <clears throat> now let's switch to the second... Um, the second part, well, one, one other thing that I should mention. The Antichrist gets his power from Satan. So Satan is always trying to copy whatever, um, whatever God does. He's an imitator. And um, so this, the uh, Antichrist, Satan, the Antichrist, and now the false prophet are sort of a uh, fake trinity uh, trying to mimic what God has done with the God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And um, so the false prophet, which is the beast from the earth, um, is also someone that is described in this chapter. And he has, the Bible says, that he has horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. So you think about what that means in terms of just what you know about those two animals. If you think about a lamb as somebody that's very gentle, you think about a dragon, you think about vicious and fire, right? Um, so these are two extremes. To me, that's sort of um, indicating a uh, someone who pretends, who is like a, a wolf in lamps in sheep's clothing, right? So somebody who is pretending to be a certain way, but is not. So he is not going to be aggressive uh, outwardly. He's going to come across as humble and maybe kind, and he's a deceiver. And you can see that in the false prophet. Now, when we read here in Revelation 13, we don't see the words false prophet, but he's identified later in Revelation 16, 13. Let me just read that. And that's where you get the word false prophet so and he's identified in several other places <clears throat> so revelation 16 13 you just read that and then i'll just give you the other references and i saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of his mouth of the dragon out of the mouth of the beast out of the mouth of the false prophet so there it is, the word, the actual word, the false prophet. It's also in Revelation 19, 20, Revelation 20, 10. So this beast from the earth is the false prophet. And if you think about what it says in Matthew, and I'm going to turn there, Matthew 7, 15. Let me find it. 
certainly takes a skill to do this on camera. I don't know that I would do this again. <laughs> it's 7.15. It says, <coughs> beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Okay, so here it's basically saying he has horns like a lamb, that's a sheep, and spoke like a dragon. And Jesus himself is saying, beware of false prophets. And this second beast is identified as a false prophet. And he comes out with horns horns like a lamb. This is exactly who Jesus is telling us to be careful for. Now, if you think about uh, what I was talking about with the unholy trinity, we have in Matthew eleven twenty seven. 27, it says that Christ receives authority from his father. Well, the Antichrist in Revelation 13, 4, the Antichrist receives his authority from the dragon, which is Satan. Now, the Holy Spirit, if you think about now the Holy Spirit, its main purpose is to glorify the Son. That's what John 16, 14 says. And the false prophet will imitate this to worship the Antichrist. And that's what it says in 13, 12. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So his main purpose is to bring worship to the first beast, which is the Antichrist. Again, this is trying to, um, this is this unholy trinity, uh, Satan, again, a counterfeit and a copycat, trying to just copy what, um, what God has set up in the holy trinity. And he, he, the false prophet, is going to be a religious leader. He's uh, going to get power from the Antichrist, who in turn gets power from Satan. And that's all here in Revelation 13. You see where it says that the, he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth to worship that first beast. He performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven. So he can perform miracles too. And Matthew 24, 24 says, because I think some people think, okay, only, only uh, God can perform miracles. Ugh, I just saw something that I forgot to say about the Antichrist. Uh, but I'll say it in a little bit. For false Christ and false prophets will rise, this is Matthew 24, 24, and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. So you see, that's exactly what this false uh, prophet is going to do and the Antichrist. They're going to be able to do miracles because they're going to be given this authority. And some of the miracles that it says that the, that the false prophet will do is he's going to call fire down upon the earth. Now, where have we seen this before, right? This is mimicking God in Sodom and Gomorrah. It's mimicking, um, it's mimicking Elijah that, you know, and it's, it's going to be mimicking what the two witnesses are going to be doing. So he might, um, <coughs> So I just, I guess I want to say with these miracles that even the miracles, they're counterfeit, they're copycat, they're not original. Uh, Satan is not a creator. He's not a creator. He doesn't create. Um, so he cannot create, he, he doesn't have originality like that. Um, that is, is for God. So he also commissions an image to be built. And this image is actually mentioned 10 times in seven chapters. So it is a pretty important image. And that is the image of the... Um, to give breath, he is granted power. This is verse 15. To give breath to the image of the beast. That the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. So he is, is given power to make this image that is built um, to speak and have power. So this is very interesting. Actually, I just saw a commentary and a video that was pretty disturbing uh, about a giant, it's this giant statue that is going around visiting places in the um, 
in the world. You can Google it, um, giant to giant to visit um, world places, and you'll you'll see what I mean. You'll you'll find the video for it. And this giant has this giant that I read about has a capability of it's like a bunch of digital screens, so they can change it to be whoever you can. You know, put your ultimate. You could even put yourself in there. But I'm sure for a price. But the idea is that there's this giant that's traveling the world and people are to be uh, you know just to see it and supposed to bring commerce and things like that and it reminded me of this passage it reminded me of this beast and this um this image that's going to be given the power and i could see like why would we even do that like why would that be a thing that you, this giant would travel if, even in the united states and the world that's kind of, you know like why um so it just to me it's it's little things it's making things um like whoa uh, things are lining up things are lining up now the last thing that I want to talk about is um, of course the mark and the mark of the beast and I have my notes in so many different places <clears throat> so the mark um, is not initiated the very first thing I want to say about it is that the mark is not initiated by the Antichrist but by the false prophet I don't know that I realized that before I don't know that I thought about it that much um, but I I was able to see here in this chapter that the false prophet is the one who pushes the mark um, to, for everybody to get the mark and this mark is 6666, which is the number of man. It will never be seven. Seven is the number of God and it's a perfect number. Six will never be that. So it is it is the number of man. And if you think about the mark of the beast, um, it's not going to allow anybody to buy and sell. So it's to receive a mark on the right hand or on their forehead so that no one may buy or sell except the one who has the mark. The name of the beast or the number of his name so this is a sort of seal that um, the enemy is putting on his people so we read about the seal in one of the earlier chapters I think Lenita talked about it where he sealed God seals his hundred and forty four thousand so that these um, so that the enemy cannot touch them well here's a seal that the enemy has uh, for his people and this mark, the 666, is going to be required to be able to purchase things and to be able to really to live. And if you think about just where we are in the world today and how things are going and what we, you know, there's so much talk about the vaccine and um, you need this vaccine passport to be able to enter in different places. Now, I'm definitely not saying that the vaccine is a mark of the beast. It can't be, right? Because all this is happening after the rapture and we're still here. So the rapture has not happened yet. So the vaccine is not the mark of the beast. What I want to say, though, is that everything is in line for it. Think about if you go to the hospital now or if anywhere, you've probably seen it in... Uh, even nail salons or wherever, they're checking your temperature and how do they check it? They have a machine and you scoot down and you put your forehead and they scan it and they're checking the temperature. What's not to say that that technology won't exist later for they scan your head to check for the mark. There's already a store in Amazon that they are piloting, I think it's in Seattle, where um, you pay with your palm. You just, you scan it and you just walk out with your goods. So that is your form of payment. They have everything inside uh, already done. There's already some chips I saw for, I think it was in another country, maybe Australia, I'm not positive on where, but where a gym has like a certain chip that can be inserted so that you don't have to worry about taking a chip tag. You just, you scan when you walk in and, and they have that. So the idea of uh, chipping people, we've been chipping animals for years, um, the technology already exists. The readers already exist. If you think about cryptocurrency and all these coins, I just saw that one of our local uh, stores, HEB, I'm in Texas, um, is gonna be accepting cryptocurrency in the future. So all this is again going towards a cashless society and all this digital digital way. So all of these things to facilitate this this digital way to pay without cash and and with a mark of some sort 
it's already exists. We're already being programmed to, you know, put our put our foreheads to scan um, this all pre-programming for such a time as this. So um, the mark of the beast, um, when it happens and when it comes, it's going to be just another thing, another requirement. And I can see that the way we're like, things are lining up right now, everything is in order. Nothing else needs to happen. Uh, for um, the rapture to happen, which is why there's so much urgency right now because we are in the last days. We are in the last days. But <clears throat> I'm glad we're reading Revelation. Um, I hope that this review of uh, chapter 13 helped to clear some things up for you or at least give you a little bit of knowledge that you may have not known that there will be two beasts or there are two, two different personalities, two, they're men, um, one from the sea, one from the earth, um, so it'll cut, they'll both come up. Uh, they will they will be part of the unholy trinity. This uh, uh, Antichrist will be charismatic. He'll be a great orator. He'll be pompous. He'll be intimidating. He might be homosexual. He won't be. Uh, he won't care about women. He will be cunning and cruel. He will be spiritually blasphemous. Uh, they will both have the ability to do miracles, counterfeit miracles, and they both are getting their power. It's demonic power. Now, the thing that I forgot to say that I'm going to end with, and I'm happy I forgot because I get to end with it, which is great, is that <clears throat> they are both limited providentially. That was the word that I saw in this commentary. But basically, they're still, it, even though all of this has happened, remember that it's all part of the plan and God is still in control. Even here in verse 5 and verse 7 and throughout the chapter, it says, let me see, verse 5, let me find it. And he was given a mouth, okay? And he was given authority. And, and verse 7, and it was granted to him. So even the power that they have, guess who gave it to them? <laughs> I mean, it has to be approved by the Father. So even that, they're limited in what they can do. They were given, they were granted this authority. They were given this authority, um, but they don't have, uh, or they were given this power, but they don't, uh, they don't have the ultimate authority. Um, so God is still absolutely in control. And I know we talked about some heavy things today that, um, but I hope that you still see, and as, as we're going through here, that you trying to find Jesus in every single chapter. And that's exactly where I see him here. I see him in those words and he, what he gave still, he, this is like, they were given power. So they didn't have it on their own. They didn't innately have it. It has to be given to them because they are um, subject still um, to our great God, which you should find so much hope in that. Now remember, if you are saved and born again, you don't have to worry about this. So you shouldn't be scared. You should um, not be scared. It should just be more motivation to make sure you know where you're going to go. So I hope you tune in tomorrow um, for chapter 14. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to keep getting... Uh, it's going to keep getting crazier and crazier in this wild ride. But I hope you're enjoying the study of Revelation. And I hope you um, learned something today. And if you have anything to share, make sure you share it. And remember, there's no fear. Absolutely no fear. Because we serve a great God. And we're going to be celebrating in glory uh, when all this is happening. In Jesus' name. So I will see you guys next time. Thank you. Bye.